Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the mayor's briefing uh, for November 1st, 2022 to order. Also present on Zoom tonight, we have Jim Tillotson, Councilor Tillotson, Councilor uh, Cushane, Councilor McAuliffe, and Councilor Brooks. Um, Mayor, you have the floor. Thank you, President LaFlam. First and foremost, welcome everyone to City Hall, specifically the City Hall Auditorium. I have four mayor's orders for consideration for the City Council. I'll start with Mayor's Order 1. It's the appropriation of $315,000 to the following named account, DPW Water Special Account for Lead Service Line Replacement Plan from the available funds in the Water Surplus Account. As you can see from the background information, the EPA and Mass DEP have established new lead and copper regulations that take effect in 2024. Uh, these funds will be used for the engineering services for the development of a lead service line inventory and replacement plan. The new regulations that will take effect uh, will also require for verification of all material types and GIS for approximately 17,000 water services in the city. So, and also, uh, we're going to have to establish a database for public view. So this project will also be submitted uh, for possible SRF and loan forgiveness programs, funding also. I know that Jim Denny is here from the Water Department, our Superintendent of Water. Jim, thanks for being here tonight. Uh, we need to get rolling on this uh, lead and copper regulation and this plan and needs to get in place. So this will get us started. Any questions about Mayor's Order 1? Yeah, sure, Gary. Does every town have to do this? Every, does every town have to do this or? Uh... Mandate for every town? Yeah, this is mandated for every town in the state. Actually, it's gonna go through the whole country. The EPA is doing this. And uh, we, have, uh, we have some, on some of our records, it doesn't say material type, so we have to verify each one at the service box. I wish we could do it inside the house from the meter, but we have to verify to the house and from the service box to the main, make sure they're not lead or uh, galvanized. And they have to be replaced within a certain period. And no grant money uh, available? There isn't, there's some SRF funding we're hoping we qualify for it, but if we don't, we still have to do the inventory. And then there's another phase of it too, which will be on the treatment side, which we have to do uh, samples throughout the city with uh, daycare centers, private daycare centers, and then the schools. So, and that we're working with UMass, so we're lucky we were able to work with them on that, so that's not costing us anything. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Any other questions or comments? Thank you for your consideration. Again, thank you, Jim, for being here. Mayor's order two is order that the city council accept the fiscal year 23 emergency connectivity fund grant in the amount of $19,557 to the Chickamauga Public Library. Said grant will be used for the purchase of three new Chromebooks with, with Wi-Fi that will be circulated to patrons as well as a Wi-Fi connectivity for 30 existing hotspots. The grant is accepted in, in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Any questions about Mayor's Order 2? Mayor, when you say circulate, they take them home? Yes, they do. Like, a, like borrowing a book, you can also borrow a hotspot. Okay. Or a computer. Any other questions about Mayor's Order 2? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 3. Order that the City Council accept the attached list of donations in the amount of $150 to the Chicopee Public Library. Said donations are accepted in accordance with Master General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. As you can see from the list, uh, we received from the Knights of Columbus $100 and another in memory of Carol Kowalczyk, $50. Any questions about Mayor's Order 3? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 4 is a new appointment. I know that your Official sheet says an appointment. It is a new one. 
to be replacing one of the golf commissioners, Gary Lonzak. And if Gary's watching, Gary, thank you for not just your service at the golf as a golf commissioner, but also uh, as a resident here in the city of Chicopee for many years. But you are hereby notified that I have this day appointed Edward Polchapek of 54 Fernwood Street to the Golf Commission to serve in such office expiring on the first day of November 2026, to which I ask the confirmation of the Honorable Council. Again, a new appointment. I, I do have a little background information on Ed Polchapek. Uh, for those who don't know him, I'm sure that you'll expect to see him in your subcommittee meeting. But uh, it's no secret that Ed was a star at Chicopee High School in baseball, hockey, and golf. Uh, during his high school years, he was inducted into the Chicopee High Athletic Hall of Fame. He got his engineering degree from UMass. Uh, while at UMass, he played hockey and baseball. After graduating, he went on to win numerous individual and team championships in golf. In 1984, he won the Massachusetts State Amateur Golf title. He continued to play and excel in numerous amateur championships and later turned pro. Because of his work as an engineer, he decided to regain his amateur status and continue to win a number of golf tournaments. Um, he's the only Chicopee resident to ever win the Massachusetts State Amateur Golf title. Sure, Jerry Roy. Yes, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say something about him. We play golf every week and you know, I, I'd like to thank him for all the golf lessons that he gives me. He'll be a good, uh, he'll be a good choice for the Golf Commission. Thank you, and I'm sure he'll share some, uh, some information on, on himself with you during the interview process. So those are my fair, four orders for consideration. Any questions about those? I just have a couple of quick updates that I'd like to share with the council. It would be your will. So first, uh, I wanted to say uh, that I thought that our spooktacular was uh, just a few days ago was definitely spectacular. So I want to thank all the vendors, and when collectively the city of Chicopee comes together for an event like that, um, you can count on uh, it being a high quality, uh, memorable, uh, I'll say, party for th those who attended. I want to thank the city councilors for, for your uh, dedication to showing up for so many events, specifically this one, and passing out the meal through Chicopee Fresh. And again, there's numerous vendors. I won't go through the list, but you'll be accepting those donations, uh, probably 40 to 50 deep for those who participated in either with monetary donations or in-kind donations to make the event, like I said, spectacular. Um, we have a couple of things that are coming up that I think are important to, to recognize. We're having our 2022 first annual job fair, which will be tomorrow at the River Mills Center from 3 to 6 p.m. If you're interested in a career or job opportunity here in the city of Chicopee, we encourage you to come to the job fair. Again, that's at 5 West Main Street, the River Mills Center, from 3 to 6 p.m. tomorrow. There'll be uh, many opportunities for those who are interested in, in a great place to work. I, I could say uh, many things about the city of Chicopee, but certainly many opportunities for those who want to enter the workforce. Uh, we have a food drive coming up that's going to be November. It's called Rescue the Hungry, and I want to thank Anne Hamlin, Anne Marie Hamlin, from our, the executive director of our retirement office, and wanted to make sure that the city of Chicopee was doing everything they could to give back uh, during the uh, Thanksgiving season. And one of the things that she came up with was uh, Rescue the Hungry. We're using our rescue bear cat. Uh, we're going to fill that up with non-perishable items and uh, hopeful that many city residents, not just employees, would like to participate. That'll be running, I believe, from noon to 5 for the 17th and 18th. Let me just check my background here quickly. <clears throat> Mike, is it noon to 5? Oh, okay, you all have one. So we're encouraging our city employees to get involved, and the goal is to make sure we make a, a pretty hefty donation for those who are less fortunate here in the city of Chicopee. Our donations will be going right directly to Lorraine Soup Kitchen and Pantry. Uh, importantly, we have our Puerto Rican flag, raise, flag raising ceremony, which will be held on November 9th at 3 p.m., right out here in front of City Hall. And 
and it'll also be inside here at, in the auditorium for light refreshment. And we're hopeful that you can join us. So that's the uh, Puerto Rican Heritage Awareness Month is November. And we're, I know that Del Marino is intimately involved in the event. Um, and it's, I'm, I believe the event's scheduled for 3 p.m. It's scheduled for 4 p.m. It's on the calendar for 4 p.m. as well. Okay. Uh, all right, 4 p.m. on the 9th of November. Let's see. Uh, just had an opportunity to walk by the clerk's office. I want to say thank you to Clerk Rattel and his team and working with uh, the Register of Voters Office and Barbara Galindo. Um, early voting has been successful. Not quite as successful as 2020, right? I believe we've seen double the amount come in. Yep. And uh, I, knew, I knew that there were just over 7,000 requests and we received 4,000 back. And, and please exercise your right to vote. And thank you, Clerk Rattel, for all you do and your team. Uh, oh, and of course, early voting ends on Friday, November 4th at 5 p.m. So you can come in between now and then, between 9 and 5, if you don't want to vote the traditional, uh, what's that, the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November, which will be November 8th. Again, November 4th ends early voting here at City of Chicopee at 5 p.m. And that's all I have for you. Uh, thank you and have a great meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. We'll take a two minute recess. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call to order the November 1st, 2022 City Council meeting to order. Please rise for the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll take a moment of silence for all those that protect us home and abroad. Thank you.
Uh, tonight's uh, um, city council meeting on Zoom tonight, we have city councilor Jim Tillotson, uh, councilor Cush Bill Cushane, councilor Joe McAuliffe, and councilor Shane Brooks. Um, at the, I'd like to welcome tonight Sandra Perret, uh, liaison for the school department for being here. Thank you. Could we have a roll call, please, clerk? President Laflamme. Here. Roy. Here. Tillotson. Here. Zagorowski. Here. McAuliffe. Here. Oops. Here. Lopez. Here. Valkyr. Here. Krampitz. Here. Bobus. Here. Cushane. Here. Bree. Here. Piniac Costello. Here. 13 present. In compliance with the open the open meeting law, the city of Chicopee is broadcasting live and for future broadcasts this meeting on Chicopee TV. Is anyone else in the audience video or audio taping this meeting? Please state your name and reason. Seeing none, we'll move back into public input. Public input is limited to three minutes or less. There will be no discussion of collective bargaining or personal attack. Is there anyone in the audience here to speak? Just please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Lisa Bienvenue, 34 Everett Street. I think it's wonderful that the um, trick-or-treat event for the children went, went so well. Uh, that's, that's a great thing. But we also have to talk about the things that aren't so great that are happening in the city, and it was quite a trifecta this weekend. You know, when, a, when an elementary school has to go on lockdown in the middle of the day because of an armed robbery, that's a problem. When there's an altercation at a high school football game where a 12-year-old boy gets beat up, that's a problem. And then this morning, no, yesterday morning, when the traffic was you know, stopped on Burnett Road because a vehicle went under a tractor trailer, though it sounds like luckily nobody was injured, that's a problem. That's not a good trifecta. That's not um, good news to hear Chickabee talked about. So maybe it's time we've tried to say, or I've heard it said, as we've had shootings and other things in the city or the fatalities that have occurred from traffic accidents, that they're one-off events. Well, they're not one-off events. This is a trend. We've gone past the tipping point, and we can't ignore these things and say, the way we've planned in the city, the way we're doing things in the city, are in everyone's best interest. Maybe it's time to step back and reassess what our strategic plans are for this city and how we can help everyone here. Because I don't, I, you know, I'd like to see the spooktacular on the news for Chickabee, and that's all there is to say. Unfortunately, that isn't all there is to say. And the Things that are not one-off events are writing the news. We can't ignore this anymore. We have to think how we're spending our money, what we're doing with our properties, what our vision is, and how we can help all of the citizens. It's time to stop saying what we do here is all good. There's a lot of good. I'm not saying there isn't good because there are a lot of, lot of good things that happen and a lot of good people. But we can't ignore the things that aren't good that are occurring. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. President, members of the council. My name is Michael Fenton. I'm an attorney and partner at the law offices of Schatz, Schwartz, and Fenton. Our office address is 1441 Main Street, Suite 1100 in Springfield. My residential address is 63 Atwater Terrace uh, in Springfield. I'm here tonight on behalf of our client, Selco Partnership, which does business in the city of Chicopee as Verizon Wireless. Uh, we have exciting uh, news about the deployment of uh, 
small cell installations on Chicopee electric light infrastructure across the city of Chicopee. And at a recent meeting, uh, this body approved the first batch of those antennas across uh, the city deploying data and voice coverage to the residents. Uh, at a recent meeting last week, uh, chaired by uh, Councillor Balakir, uh, 10 additional sites were brought forward and you'll see them on your agenda tonight as items 11 through 20. Uh, those site addresses are Sheridan Street, Chicopee Street, Foss Avenue, Arcade Street, Waite Street, Granby Road, Riverview Terrace, Sunnyside Street, Baltimore Ave, and East Street. Uh, it's my understanding that there's a favorable recommendation from uh, the committee as a result of the hearing for all but one of the items, and that's item 13 on your agenda, uh, 56 Foss Avenue. Uh, I'm happy to report that I had a chance to connect with the ward counselor, Councillor Lopez, and I'd like to thank her for her time and speaking with me on behalf of Verizon Wireless. Uh, we would like to request that that item be continued tonight in the interest of continuing to work with this body. Uh, Councillor Balakir as the chair of the zoning committee and Councillor Lopez as the ward counselor from that district. And it's my hope that by continuing to work with them, uh, we'll be able to come up with a mutually agreeable solution for uh, the residents of Chicopee, the city council, and uh, Verizon Wireless. But we very much would like uh, your support on the remaining nine items, items 11, 12, and 14 through 20 this evening. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, Sam Shumsky, Five Savory Drive, um, Chicopee, Mass. I just wanted to, I'll be brief, I wanted to express my gratitude to the Chicopee Police Department for increasing patrols in the Litwin School neighborhood. And I also wanted to thank the Chicopee DPW for painting the four-way stop lines at the end of Morrow Drive. Um, Chicopee, the, we had a Litwin School neighborhood regarding speeding in the area and I just want to express that Derek and I are working together along with the city council because safe ch the safety of the neighborhood and our children is paramount to bringing new families in and keeping families safe. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Carlene Nahorniak and I reside on Clover Street in Chicopee and I'm here specifically tonight to comment on the Project SC10 which is poll number one on 56 Foss Ave. And I'd like to start with the City of Chicopee Zoning Ordinance on Small Wireless Facilities, Chapter 277. Is that better? Oh, yes, I think it is. Thank you, thank you. And, and um, that is specific to purpose and intent of Chapter 277, quote, SWF's small wireless facilities shall be so designed and installed so as to minimize adverse effect. Thank you, okay. Thank you. Adverse ef visual effects through careful design and siting with the, an intent to preserve property values and the aesthetic character of Chicopee. Further, the ordinance also requires the special permit application to describe, quote, why the desired location is superior to any other additional location. A and that is including visual aspects and also proximity to single family residences. The portion of the response from Verizon in the special permit application indicates, quote, Verizon contends that any visual impact associated with proposed antennas will be minimal. And myself and my neighbors are interested in additional justification from Verizon Wireless on that. Were there other sites that were look looked at? At a recent public hearing, I requested on behalf of myself and my neighbors that Verizon Wireless in good faith reconsider poll number one location and identify a more appropriate and community acceptable site for some of the following reasons. These are just some. One and very important is to meet compliance with the City of Chicopee's Article 1 on small wireless facilities as adopted by the City Council. 
much of the verbiage here and the language I have taken directly from the, the chapter 277. You've got 30 uh, seconds, ma'am. Oh, okay. To minimize adverse <clears throat> visual effects w would be a goal, and it's important for me to note that the utility pole that has is the replacement pole exceeds the height of many surrounding structures, and this is without the, Vi the Verizon Tower. And we also note that it is in a very highly residential area and affects our landscape and also our horizon. Thank you for the opportunity to input. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Cindy, and I live at 54 Clover Street, and I also work in healthcare. Um, I know that, you know, our world, we're very technological and scientific, and it's ever-changing. Um, some people will say that this, these cell towers affect your health. Some say they don't. Um, but I have to tell you that, you know, I have a lot of grandchildren. My grandchildren play in my yard, which is very close to the tower. They ride their bikes down the street close to the tower. And I just feel that, you know, life is too precious to really gamble with is it bad, is it good? Um, so I feel as though, you know, I don't think it belongs in a residential neighborhood, period. Um, I also looked into some of our property values. And I do know that um, the realtor industry has written several article, articles documenting the property devaluation after communication towers are built near their properties. Um, HUD, you have to, basically they have to disclose they have to disclose that there, if somebody's getting a HUD loan, they have to disclose that there are um, cell towers, there's, you know, power lines, all of that. So, in closing, because, you know, I, I think we argued about this an awful lot the last time, I just feel as though, you know, in this world, I know they said it didn't matter, um, it's not phones, it's the internet. And, you know, I know we live in a world where instant gratification is something that we all I don't know about you, but, you know, I click the button on Amazon and I have it the next day. I think that, you know, if we've got to wait a little while for our Internet, you know, I think that our, our, our health is more important. So, anyway, thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Maribel Sepulveda, and I live on 57 Foss Ave, right across the street from 56 Ave, where my neighbor Joanne resides, where the poll is going. Um, I won't try to repeat anything that anybody else said, because we do thank you and we appreciate your time. But I did want to show you a picture today that I took this morning from my ring doorbell, um, showing exactly where the poll is. That's what I'm looking at, and it's like five feet feet from Joanne's stairs. So I'll just hand that what you guys want to look at. Also, um, there was an email that we received from attorney, um, I apologize, I can't remember her name, from Verizon. And in the email, um, she did make a note, to, there were some, some photos uh, showing some towers stating that there were a couple of towers that were taller than the proposed site. Well, I happened to drive by those particular towers when I came, was on my way to the meeting, and with work I didn't have the opportunity to print out those pictures. Um, but just to let you guys know, it, those towers that, she, that a picture was taken of is along the river, and there aren't houses directly like you see there. There's plenty, at least 200, 300 feet away. And if you guys drove by, you'd be able to see that yourself. And also, in um, the email that she sent, she did send uh, three sites um, from the Nan National Cancer Insti uh, American Cancer Society, FCC, and from the WHO organization. I won't go into details because, as you know, my neighbors have said, you know, there's pros people are going to say, or agencies, or um, you know, will say, okay, it's safe. Other ones will say that it's not safe. But if you look directly in those um, sites, 
throughout the sites, it does mention that there is more research that is needed. So I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you again for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anyone else for public input? Is there anyone on Zoom for public input? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to return to the regular order of business. So moved. Motion made and second that we return to the regular order of business. Roll call, please. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Nagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13, yes. And the motion passes. Uh, communications, please. We have one. On behalf of Verizon Wireless, we request a continuance of the hearing regarding the application for an antenna installation on the utility pole located at 56 Foss Avenue for 60 days with the understanding that the matter will be on the agenda for the next City Council Zoning Committee meeting, November 30th, 2022. Thank you, Alan Freeman. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Labrie. Uh, motion to refer uh, this item to uh, this uh, correspondence to item number 13. Motion made and second that this correspondence be communication be sent to item 13. Roll call, please. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Jorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Minutes, please. We have two sets, October 18th and October 25th. Councilor McAuliffe. Motion that the order, uh, the minutes from October 18th and October 25th uh, be accepted and approved this evening. Motion made and second that the minutes from October 18th and October 25th be accepted this evening on the motion. Self-explanatory. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Borowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Bree. Yes. Penny and Costello. Yes. 13, yes. And the motion passes. Okay, we'll go into the mayor's orders, please. Order that the sum of $315,000 be hereby appropriate to the following named account TBW Water Special Account for Lead Service Line Replacement Plan. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the water surplus account. Contra Dobas. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. Uh, on the motion, Mr. President, this is uh, for uh, EPA uh, mandates. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments on Zoom? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Or that the City Council accept the FY23 Emergency Connectivity Fund grant in the amount of $19,557 to the Chicopee Public Library. Said grant will be used for the purchase of three new Chromebooks with Wi-Fi that will be circulate, circulated to patrons as well as Wi-Fi connectivity for 30 existing hotspots. This grant is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Concert McAuliffe. Motion that the mayor's order be received and the donation approved this evening. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor and accepted this evening on the motion. On the motion, this is a donation for the ability to check out different internet connective hotspots as well as uh, three new Chromebooks uh, here at our library. Thank you very much. Um, any other comments on the floor? Uh, any comments on Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? 
Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Or that the City Council accept the attached list of donations in the amount of $150 to the Chigabee Public Library. Said donations are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Councilor Costello. Thank you. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor and the donation be accepted. Thank you. Motion made a second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor and accepted this evening on the motion. This is self-explanatory. It's a $150 donation. We really appreciate donations coming in to various departments. This particular donation is designated for the Chicopee Public Library. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments on the floor? Any comments on Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Salkir? Yes. Frampets? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Bree? Yes. Vinia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a new appointment of Edward Polchepec as a member of the Golf Commission. Contra Krampitz. Motion that the mayor's order be received and sent to the Human Resources Subcommittee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the mayor's order be received and tickets, I'm sorry, second in the motion and tickets reading and sent to the HR department for a public hearing on a motion. Uh, yes, this is a, uh, a new appointment uh, to replace uh, Gary Ziemba, who is uh, 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 leaving the uh, commission. And we thank uh, Gary for his uh, service. And uh, we look forward to having a discussion with uh, Mr. Polchepec on why he wants to be on the golf commission. Yeah, I just want to correct. That's Gary Lonzak. No. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary Lonzak. That's okay. Any other comments on the floor? Anyone on Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Krowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Yes. Free? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Education Committee. Be it ordered that the Education Committee meet to discuss drivers violating school bus law regarding not stopping when students get on and off stopped school buses. Councilor Costello. Thank you. Motion that the Education Committee report be received and placed on file. Motion made and second that the committee report be the Education Committee report be received and placed on file. On the motion. Thank you. This was a very interesting topic. I thank the people that attended from the school committee as well as from the city council. Uh, they're keeping abreast on what's happening in our schools and with education. There uh, have been difficulties in regards to school bus violations, and right now we're trying to address that with the cooperation of the school department and Ann Costs. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on the floor? Any comments on Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Fez? Yes. Alkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Free? Yes. Finia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Education Committee. Be it ordered that the Education Subcommittee meet to discuss school department issues. Councilor Costello. Thank you. Motion that the Education Committee report be received and placed on file. Motion made and second that the Education Committee report be received and placed on file. On the motion. Okay, in this particular um, topic, it was school department issues, and that included uh, what's happening with the budget right now. It's uh, early on in the budget process, but we as a counselor, counselors indicated that we want to stay on top of the school department budget and to be informed of what's going on. Uh, last year it came in late and some counselors voiced concerns about that and we're hoping to avoid that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if it's a will of board, I'd like to just make a comment about this here. Please. Yep. Roll call, please. President LaFlamme. Yes. Yep. Roy. Uh, yes. Thing. Tillotson. Yes. Zygorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Three. Yes. Vinia Costello. Yes. Twelve. Yes. One abstention. Thank you. Um, the reason I wanted to speak was um, I um, 
uh, well, attended the education committee meeting, and on the agenda was also about the, regarding the Mass Mutual. And just for the record, um, I left the property, I mean, left the building prior to any discussions with the Mass Mutual because I work for Mass <coughs> Mutual. I just want that on the record. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on the committee report. Place on file. President, we'll call, President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Sillerton? Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Dabrowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Free? Yes. Penny Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Public Safety Committee. Be it ordered that group homes be discussed by the Public Safety Committee. Councilor Zygorowski. Motion that the uh, committee report be received and placed on file. Motion made and second that the public safety committee report be received and accepted this evening and placed on file. On the motion. On the motion, I refer to the maker of the order, Ms. Pignac Costello. Thank you. Answer Costello. Thank you. Uh, there, was a, there was a resident in Ward 9 that was concerned about group homes um, and uh, she, I'm going to make this perfectly clear. I did not hear in any of her comments that she was opposed to groups' homes, and I did not hear in her comments that she wanted them closed. She just wanted some further information, and she wanted to make sure that if any improvements can be made, uh, she would be um, very happy to see the improvements go on. But again, there was no talk that I heard of that she wanted to close this. And uh, she indicated that we all know that group homes are here to stay. What many residents want in group homes is not to close them, but to make them as best as they can be. And if improvements are needed, that discussion should be made on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments on the floor? Councilor Brooks. So I attended that meeting, and it, as many of you know, that for the better part of the last 27 years, this has been my full time living, working in human services, and supporting people with disabilities. It's unfortunate the continued ignorance of a few uh, required a meeting to happen for one of the most vulnerable populations we have in our society. Um, the bias against the disability population clearly still exists in 2022, which is just amazing to me. I still don't fully understand why it was referred to public safety as if an individual or individuals with disabilities pose some public safety risk. Uh, I think it was an ill-advised decision to put it in public safety. Um, I'm just, I'm generally frustrated with the comments that were made by the resident, uh, her name was Mary Skinner, with respect to reaching out to the state and not being able to be explained to her the rules and regulations with respect to how we site and oversee group homes. Um, I, I find it somewhat laughable that the state couldn't explain the rules to her that they promulgate and uh, set as MGL. So. I won't go on much longer about this. It, it was, you know, it was definitely telling to hear that there wasn't much commentary outside of the, the resident of the nine with respect to group homes. And uh, they certainly belong in our community. I think uh, Councilor Lopez uh, made salient points as to asking why we were actually there that night. Uh, I still firmly believe it's a not my backyard mentality. And again, that is unfortunate for 2022 to still have uh, this very vulnerable population be subjected to uh, neighbors who think that they don't belong. So I'll stop there before I get uh, really fired up and uh, we'll let somebody else chime in. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on Zoom? Anyone else for a second? Did someone want to talk on Zoom? No. Any other comments from the floor again? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Sillerton. Yes. Yes. Zygorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? No. Lopez? I'm sorry. What are we voting on? Place on file. Just to place it on file. Oh, yes. You can place it on file. Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? 
Yes. Three. Yes. Penny and Costello. Yes. Twelve yes, one no. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Public Safety Committee. Be it ordered that the Public Safety Committee meet to discuss the Litwin School neighborhood. Um, Ziggy. Councilor Zigarowski. A uh, motion to place the committee report. Motion to accept the committee report and place it on. Motion made and second to accept the Public Safety Committee report and place on file. On the motion. On the, on the motion, uh, this was an order brought in by uh, all the uh, councilmen at large and Councilman Dobaz and our forward to Councilman Dobaz. Councilman Dobaz. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, School Committee Rep Shumsky uh, for really uh, putting a lot of effort and work into this and really taking the lead on this. And I want to thank the at-large counselors uh, for also putting a lot of work and support uh, into this issue. Uh, and thank you, Councilor Zagorowski, for holding the hearing. Um, the streets uh, leading to and from Litwin School, uh, uh, obviously uh, there's a lot of issues. We held a, a very good hearing, very in-depth. Um, I want to thank the residents who showed up as well. Um, there's a lot of traffic issues, speeding, people blowing through stop signs, um, you know, some other traffic issues, and, uh, you know, some residents provided video footage of people going past uh, school buses with the lights on. Uh, you know, there's uh, footage of people going through uh, stop signs, uh, speeding, um, some other altercations, uh, and uh, it's just it's very concerning. Uh, I know since that hearing, DPW has repainted uh, the lines. Uh, I know there's been some police enforcement, so thank you to Chicopee Police and DPW for their work. Um, hopefully, uh, uh, myself and uh, uh, School Committee Rep Shumsky are uh, pushing for speed tables in this area. I hope DPW agrees with that. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully we can make this area safer. There's a lot of special needs children in this area, um, a lot of school bus stops. Uh, and uh, it's just very, for the people who live in that area, it's just un unacceptable that people are going through stop signs and, uh, you know, going past school buses with the lights on. And, uh, you know, a lot of residents have camera footage set up, and I have no problem with publishing videos of, of people going through stop signs. So uh, please slow down and follow the traffic laws. Um, you know, at the hearing that, you know, there was a child there. Uh, a mother and her, with her child uh, who spoke about uh, cars that go through the stop sign and he's not able to ride his bike on the street uh, for that reason. And I think that's very unfortunate uh, in an area like Burnett Road that you can't, you know, ride your bike on the street. So, um, you know, I live directly, uh, I live on Post Road, I live directly on one of these streets to and from Litwin. Uh, so this, you know, per this personally, you know, it, it, it affects me, my family. I jog here all the time. Uh, I met uh, the uh, Doug Ellis, the engineer here with a resident, and we saw a large truck go through a stop sign. So uh, very dangerous intersection. Um, but I want to thank everybody for, for their work, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, solve some of these issues. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Councilor Zigarowski. Yeah, I'd like to make one comment. Uh, I want to credit uh, Mrs. Gina Koss uh, for her uh, email that she sent me, and I think I sent a copy to all our committee members. Uh, in that evening, uh, Sunshine Village, I think, was getting, a, I hate to use the word, a bad rap, and she made note and talked about it heavily in a two-page email that I, I did send to all the committee members, and she was very uh, positive and trying to work with the neighborhood, so I think it'll hopefully that uh, Mr. Rossi, who was sort of the spokesperson for this, this meeting, uh, got the email that I sent. I believe he, he did get it, and I, I just want to thank uh, Mrs. Koss for uh, the way she per talked about Sunshine Village and everything she is trying to do with the neighbors. So. You know, I just want to thank her. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Three. Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Three. Yes. Penny and Costello. Yes. Thirteen. Yes. And a motion passes. I have a favorable report from the zoning committee for special permit application under Chapter 275-50C1 and 2 for the purpose of digital message board with a waiver requested setback from 25 feet to 1.3 feet. Location 765-767 Memorial Drive. Councillor Balakir. A motion to accept the special permit application report 
and that the digital message board be approved this evening with restrictions. Motion made and second that the committee report be received and be approved this evening on the motion. Okay. On the motion, this is a special permit application for the purpose of a digital message board sign. This is going to be at Curry Honda, and there's also a waiver requested from a front setback from 25 feet to 1.3 feet. Okay, so we we'll have uh, to do uh, two votes this evening. One of them is the waiver, and then we also have to do the vote on the special permit. And again, the uh, waiver is a front setback from 25 feet to plus or minus 1.3 feet. So is the motion to approve the waiver from the setback from 25 feet to 1.3 square feet. M motion made and second that the waiver be approved this evening. Okay, waiver, roll call. Any comments? Anyone on Zoom seeing none? Roll call. President Laflamme. On the waiver, yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes on the waiver. And the motion passes. Okay, and the second item to be voted on is uh, to motion to approve the special permit application to be in compliance regarding city regulations of digital message board signs and having an eight second timing delay for screens to change. Okay, I, I already second that, so uh, any comments on that one from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Shillitton? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Novus? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Finia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Okay, we have a favorable report from the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under Chapter 275-9L2 for the purpose of a 69-foot tall highway pole sign for Milton Rents. Increase the sign face area from 120 square feet to 432 square feet. Reduction of setback from 25 feet to zero. Milton Rents. Councilor Balak here. Okay. Motion to accept the uh, special permit application and, uh, and approve the sign signage changes with restrictions. Motion made and second that the zoning committee report be re received and second this, uh, and approved this evening on the motion. Okay, as was referenced, uh, this is a special permit application for the purpose of a 69 foot tall highway pole sign for Milton Rents. And this um, also has um, a couple of waivers. Increase the sign face area from 120 square feet to 432 square feet. Reduction of setback requirement from 25 feet to plus or minus zero feet. Um, this was a required edit the previous application, which erroneously labeled the height as 60 feet instead of 69 feet. And this is a sign located at 60 Fuller Road. So. We have um, a couple of uh, waivers that we have to vote on. Uh, waiver number one is a reduction of setback requirement from 25 feet to plus or minus zero feet. Motion made and second that the waiver be, uh, from the committee be report be received and approved this evening. Anybody on the floor on that comment on the waiver? Anybody on Zoom for the waiver? Seeing none, roll call. Okay, on waiver one, President Laflamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Shillitton? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Free? Yes. Finia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the waiver is approved. Next okay. one. And waiver number two is uh, to increase the sign face area from 120 square feet to 432 square feet. Motion made and second that the second waiver be approved this evening. Any comments on the floor? Any comments on Zoom? Roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Billiton? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? 
Yes. Three, yes. Any at Costello? Yes. 13, yes. And the waiver is approved. Okay, and uh, now we will vote on waiver number three. Uh, this is a motion to approve the increase the signage height from 20 feet to 69 feet rather than to 60 feet as previously miscalculated. Motion made and second that the zoning committee report for waiver number three be approved this evening. Anyone on the floor? Anyone on Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Three? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 13, yes. And the motion passes. Okay, on the permit. Okay, all right, on the permit, this is a motion to approve the special permit with restrictions concerning signage at this property located at 60 Fuller Road. Motion made and second that the zoning committee re report be received a special permit uh, granted this evening. Okay, and this permit is to run with the applicant. And thank you. Anyone on the floor for comments? Anyone on Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? <coughs> yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Free? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13, yes. And a motion passes. Okay. Number 11. Number 11. We have a favorable report from the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under se Section 275-9 for the purpose of installing <coughs> small, small wireless facilities on 10 existing utility poles under Chapter 277. Location of pole P102 Sheridan Street. Address Sheridan Street, Selco Partnership. Councilor Balakir. Okay, a motion to accept the special permit application and motion. approve with uh, restrictions. Motion made and second to accept the uh, special permit application and, and approve this evening. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, um, this, is, um, this is an interesting one. Uh, we had uh, quite a spirited meeting last week, and um, we were looking at um, the possibility of adding small wireless facilities, antennas on 10 existing utility poles. And um, we had pretty much a consensus on nine out of the 10. So we're gonna take these uh, one at a time, and um, with the exception of the one in question, the other should go fairly quickly. So without further ado, this is a special permit application for the purpose of installing a small wireless antenna facility located on pool number P102 Sheridan Street on the address of Sheridan Street. And this is um, with the restrictions of the SPRAC report and the applicant meeting the conditions of said SPRAC report. Motion made and second that the zoning committee report be received in Approved as spoken. Okay. That's number one. Yes, this is number one. Yeah. Any comments on the floor? Any comments on Zoom? Roll call. To President be clear, it's not poll number one. It's motion 11, and it's poll 102 Sheridan Street, not poll one. Yep. 102 Sheridan Street. Right. We're doing them separate, though. This is number right, one. Right, we're going to do, right. Well, this is, oh, uh, I see. Not okay. poll number one, so right. I don't this want is, the record right. to reflect again, that. Again, this is location poll. P102 Sheridan Street, address is Sheridan Street, and this is a permit to run with the applicant. I'm President, thank you. Go ahead. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Borowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Rampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Three. Yes. Penny and Costello. Yes. 13, yes. And a motion passes for number one. From the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under Section 275-9 for the purpose of installing small wireless facilities on 10 utility poles under Chapter 277. Location of pole P140 and a half, 1 Chigaby Street, 582 Chigaby Street. Councilor Ballack here. Motion to accept the special permit application and approve with restrictions. Motion made second to accept the zoning committee report, a special app, and approve this evening. On the motion. On the motion, again, uh, this is uh, regarding installing a small wireless antenna facility located on a pole of uh, P140 one half dash one Chickabee Street, address 582 Chickabee Street. And um, 
This is um, subject to the restrictions of the SPRAC report. Um, uh, and that's pretty much it. This is, a, again, the same thing. This is a permit to run with the land. Go ahead. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Con yep. Do Council we have to put subject to the SPRAC report on each one? If not, can we make a friendly amendment to add that? I don't know if we needed to. Um, I did discuss this with Council. Okay. And in order to further be in compliance, because there was a SPRAC committee report, it was recommended that we do that. Okay, so can we make a friendly amendment to include in this motion uh, the SPRAC report just because it wasn't included in the original one that we signed? Just a point of information. If we went back to the um, original documentation, the previous one did have information listed Correct. about the SPRAC report with the exception of Fossa Avenue. All right. Okay, so that, that's enough to cover for all of them. We don't need to include it on each one. I just want to make sure that we don't have to go back to these. Well, <laughs> yes, but, but also uh, it, it, it's my understanding for the discussion, again, talking with council, that I should reference that for each motion just to have that on the record. Okay. 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 All set? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody on Zoom seeing on roll call? President LaFleur. Yes. Roy? Yes. Silliton? Yes. Dabrowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Hooks? Yes. yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Vinny Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the ordinance, uh, sorry, from the zoning committee for a special permit application under section 275-9 for the purpose of installing small wireless facilities on 10 existing utility poles under chapter 277. Location of pole P1 Foss Avenue, address 56 Foss Avenue. Councilor Ballack here. Well, a motion to accept the communication that was referenced regarding the application for an antenna installation. Motion made in second that we accept the, what was it? The, the communication that was referenced uh, in item 13 for 60 days with the understanding that the matter will be on agenda for the next city council zoning committee meeting. And I have two motions that, will, that will follow. Okay, why don't you do motion one? Okay. Uh, motion number one is a motion to accept and grant the 60-day communication extension from Verizon Wireless. Motion made and second that we accept the 60-day grant from Verizon. On the motion. On the motion, um, as I referenced a couple of minutes ago when I started this, um, this dissertation regarding the installation of small wireless antenna facilities, um, we had 10, 10 that we were interested in granting, 10 existing utility poles, and uh, nine out of the 10, uh, we came to common ground. But this one in particular, there were some questions uh, from uh, the, the neighbors and also from the ward counselor. And we had some additional discussion with um, council uh, both our council and also council representing uh, Verizon Wireless. So at this point, um, the sentiment is that uh, it's best to defer until we get some additional information. Thank you. So we're going to be voting on accepting and granting the 60-day. Correct. That is, that is motion number one. I also have a second motion, but we'll do this one at a time. Okay. Thank you. Any, uh, Councilor Lopez. So during the last zoning meeting, we heard from numerous residents, particularly residents in my ward regarding this matter. We postponed this specific poll to the call of the chair. So I just wanted that for informational purposes in case someone wasn't watching that meeting. Um, and this was to allow for Verizon to provide supplemental information regarding their then claim at the time that that claim has now changed. But the claim at the time was that 56 <coughs> Foss Ave was the only viable poll option for that area. Um, we, Verizon is being represented by Shad Swartz and Fenton. Attorney Fenton is here today, and Attorney Freeman was in attendance at the zoning meeting. Um, 
Attorney Freeman uh, sent a communication over and I received that. Um, it was also forwarded to some of the residents that were in attendance. That communication was not sufficient. I responded with yet again um, more information on what it was that was being requested and I provided that in writing at, this at that time. Uh, during my conversation this afternoon with Attorney Fenton, um, he admitted that 56 Foss Ave is not the only viable pool option and that there is at least one other alternate pool location that may be available to cover the network coverage in that area. He also stated that he agrees that replacing an existing pool so that it becomes suitable is something that is possible, uh, that Verizon would agree to replace a pool and pay for it even if they needed to, and that unlike previous communication that we had received, replacing a pool or rather the need to replace it uh, would would not make it a not viable option. So that's not an obstacle that would warrant exempting that pool from being considered. So I thank Attorney Fenton for that information. Um, Verizon has agreed to the following. So in good faith support, uh, the postponement of the full at 56 Foss Ave, which we heard from them this evening about that. They also fully understand that the information they have provided uh, to me and the residents as of today was not sufficient. They have received clear communication both in writing and during my call with Attorney Fenton as to what information myself and the residents are requesting. Uh, they have agreed to send me a list of any and all other potential polls that may be viable so that I, working alongside with the residents, can choose another poll location that can be brought to the council we can consider. I have stated this before and I'll state it again. I do believe that it's in the best interest of the neighborhood to have better connectivity. However, there are resident concerns regarding this specific poll location and I believe those concerns are valid and I will advocate for the best interest of my ward residents as the poll location directly affects them and we heard from the residents what some of those effects would be today and at the last zoning meeting. I'm glad and thankful that Verizon has indicated that they're willing to work with us on this matter. Uh, I much prefer to collaborate and work together than to have uh, rifts. It's, it's, it's good to be a good neighbor and it's good to be a good business working alongside us. So I thank you for your willingness to collaborate and I'm hopeful that we will be able to come to an agreement that will be in the best interest of the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Councilor Costello. Thank you. I'd like to thank Councilor Lopez for her hard work in regards to trying to resolve this issue. But I think a a big thank you should go to the residents because they brought a lot of new information in regards to this type of technology to the zoning committee. And I truly appreciate that. The research that they did and the presentation that they did was a terrific learning experience for all of us. These, some of these uh, technologies are breaking ground and we have to stay on top of what's going on. And with the help of the residents, we're able to do that. And they've attended several meetings. They've been persistent in regards to what their requests are. And I, uh, I want to give them another thank you for not only attending and be part of the democratic process, but most importantly, to educate us. Because I got an education that night in regards to what their research was in regards to technology, thank you. Thank you, any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillerton. Yes. Kurowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Alkier. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Obis. Yes. Cushain. Yes. Three. Yes. Penny Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Number two. Okay. And I have a second motion. Uh, motion to refer back to the zoning subcommittee for the November 30th, 2022 meeting. Motion made and second that the uh, second part be referred to the November 30, 30th zoning committee meeting on the motion. On the motion, um, as was mentioned earlier with um, Councillor Fenton's remarks and um, that he discussed earlier and also with Councillor Lopez and, and the um, communication that's been going back and forth, um, uh, I think it's best to take a look at this issue and um, have some further edification, further study for so we can make a, a better decision or another decision. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillerton. Yes. Kowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushane. 
Yes. Bree? Yes. Vinia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under Section 275-9 for the purpose of installing small wireless facilities on 10 existing utility poles under Chapter 277. Location of pole P10 Arcade Street across from 162 Arcade Street. Contra Balacare. Motion to accept the special permit application and approve with restrictions. Motion made and, and approve the zoning committee special application and approve this evening on the motion. On the motion, uh, again, this is for the purpose of installing a small wireless antenna facility located on a pole at P10 Arcade Street, address across from 122, uh, excuse me, across from 162 Arcade Street and uh, this is uh, subject to the restrictions of the SPRAC commit report and applicant meeting the con conditions of said SPRAC report. And this is a permit to run with the application. Applicant. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Sillerton? Yes. Dabrowski? Yes. McAuliffe? <clears throat> Councilor McAuliffe? Motion that the mayor's order be received. I just need a yes or a no from you. Just need a yes or no, Joel. Oh, then yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushain? Yes. Free? Yes. Finia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under Section 275-9 for the purpose of installing small wireless facilities on 10 existing utility poles under Chapter 277. Location of poll P8, Waite Avenue, address Waite Avenue. Councilor Ballack here. A motion to accept the special permit application and approve with restrictions. Motion made and second to accept the special application and approve this evening. On the motion. On the motion, uh, again, this is uh, for the purpose of installing a small wireless antenna facility on a pole located at P8, Waite Avenue. The address is Waite Avenue. Uh, again, this is subject to the restrictions of the SPRAC report and applicant meeting the conditions of said SPRAC report. And this is a permit to run with the applicant. Thank you. Anyone from the floor? Anyone from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Sillerton? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushain? Yes. Bree? Yes. Finia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under Section 275-9 for the purpose of installing small wireless facilities on 10 existing utility poles under Chapter 277. Location of pole P34 and 1 half Granby Road. Address 457 Granby Road. Councilor Balakir. Uh, excuse me, the uh, motion is to accept the special permit application and approve with restrictions. Motion made and second that the zoning committee re report be received and a special permit granted this evening. On the motion. On the motion, this is uh, the purpose of installing a small wireless antenna facility on a pole located at P34 and a half Granby Road, address 457 Granby Road, permit to run with the applicant, subject to the to the restrictions of the SPRAC report and applicant meeting the uh, restrictions uh, of the said SPRAC report. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Sillerton? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Finia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under Section 275-9 for the purpose of installing small wireless facilities on 10 existing utility poles under Chapter 277. Location of pole P1 half Riverview Terrace, address 29 Riverview Terrace, pole on Front Street. Contra Ballack here. Motion to accept the special permit application and approve with restrictions. Motion made and second that the Zoning Committee report special permit be approved this evening. On the motion. Uh, again, this is a purpose uh, for installing small wireless antenna facilities on a pole located at P1 and a half Riverview Terrace, address 29 Riverview Terrace, pole on Front Street. Permit to run with the applicant, and this is subject to the restrictions 
of the SPRAC report and the applicant meeting the restrictions of said SPRAC report. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. <coughs> yes. Gorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Cushain. Yes. Free. Yes. And Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under Section 275-9 for the purpose of installing small wireless facilities on 10 existing utility poles under Chapter 277. Location of this pole, P1 Sunnyside Street. Address is 25 Sunnyside Street. Contra Ballack here. Motion to accept the special permit application and approve with restrictions. Motion made and second that the zoning committee report be received in the special permit granted this evening with restrictions on the motion. Uh, again, this is a f purpose for installing small wireless antenna facilities. A location of the pole P1 Sunnyside Street, address 25 Sunnyside Street. Uh, this is a permit to run with the applicant and subject to the restrictions of the SPRAC report and applicant meeting the restrictions of said SPRAC report. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Phillotson. Yeah. <coughs> yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Cushain. Yes. Free. Yes. Anna Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Favorable report from the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under Section 275-9 for the purpose of installing small, small wireless <coughs> facilities on 10 existing utility poles under Chapter 277. Location of this pole, P6 Baltimore Avenue, address 75 Baltimore Avenue. Councilor Balakir. Motion to approve the special permit application and approve with restrictions. Motion made and second that the Zoning Committee report Special permit be approved this evening with restrictions on the motion. Uh, again, this is for the purpose of installing a small wireless antenna facility. Location of a pole at P6 Baltimore Avenue, address 75 Baltimore Avenue. Again, this is a permit to run with the applicant. Subject to the restrictions of the SPRAC report and applicant meeting the restrictions of said SPRAC report. Uh, one final question on this. Uh, Councilor Krampus did have a question regarding this, but maybe we can discuss it <coughs> before we take the vote. Councilor Krampus. Yeah, there was a uh, concern by the resident that this was a, a double poll, and I will be reaching out to uh, Electric Light to get that resolved because it's been there okay. for years. Thank you. Right. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Phillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. <coughs> yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushain. Yes. Free. Yes. Finia Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under Section 275-9 for the purpose of installing a small wireless facility on 10 utility existing utility poles under Chapter 277. Location of this poll, P. 26 S. Carew Street, address 560 <coughs> East Street, poll on Carew Street. Councilor Ballack here. Motion to accept the special permit application and approve with restrictions. Motion made and second that the Zoning Committee report special permit application be received and approved this evening with restrictions. On the motion. On the motion, uh, again, this is for the purpose of installing a small wireless antenna facility uh, on a pole located at P26 S. Carew Street, the address 560 East Street, Paul on Carew Street. Uh, this is a permit to run with the applicant, subject to the restrictions of the SPRAC report and the applicant meeting the conditions of said SPRAC report. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? <coughs> yes. Gorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez, Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushane. 
Yes. Three. Yes. Vinnie Costello. Yes. Thirteen. Yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the zoning committee for a special permit application under section 275-40G two and four for the purpose of redevelopment of an existing building from automotive repair shop and reta retail sales showroom for Hanush Jewelers with reduced on-site parking. On-site parking. Waiver requested section two. 275-40N2M requires space for requires one space per 250 square feet in public use plus space for 500 square feet other gross area which equates to 15 spaces number of parking spaces proposed is 9 location 704 Memorial Drive Councilor Balakir well, a motion to uh, accept a special permit application uh, and be granted and approved this evening with restrictions. Motion made and second that the zoning committee report be received in a special permit granted with restrictions. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, as was referenced by our clerk, this is uh, for the purpose of a redevelopment of existing building. This is the old Midas muffler shop on um, Memorial Drive, and this is to be converted into a retail sales showroom for Hanwish Jewelers with reduced on-site parking. So we have um, uh, two votes this evening, folks. One is with a waiver regarding parking, and um, the other is regarding the special permit. So uh, we can take waiver number one. Correct. Okay, waiver Motion made and second that we approve waiver number one. Okay. On the motion. And uh, on the motion, this waiver number one, um, this is um, a section 275-40 into subsection M requires one space for 250 square feet in public use plus one space per 500 square feet of other gross area, which equates to 15 spaces. Number of parking spaces proposed is nine, so this is a waiver <coughs> for parking space reduction. Okay, thank you. Any comments? Concert Zigorowski. Just one minor uh, comment. Uh, I spoke to Mr. Nato at that meeting, and uh, you know we didn't see any place in there but handicap parking. And he did assure me that he will have a handicap parking spade in there. It's not listed there, but I guess it doesn't have to be. We could add that right now. He, he'll have to have one to secure his building permit and certificate of occupancy. It's required by the building department. But I wanted to make sure that yeah. he was aware of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else on the floor? Anyone from Zoom? We're going to vote on the waiver one. One waiver. Go ahead. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Borowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Free. Yes. Penny and Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. On the permit. Okay, and this is on the permit. Motion to approve the special permit application uh, with conditions of city departments all being met, and this is a permit to run with the land. Motion made and second that the special permit application be received in a, and approved this evening. On the motion, you just said it. Right, again, this is, um, we, we just want to make sure that this is going to, this application will be uh, approve with conditions of all department, city departments being met and running with the land, the permit. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Billiton? Jim? Yes. Zigorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Be it ordered that the Ordinance Committee review the current tag sale policy. Council Labrie? Yes. Motion to send the ordinance, uh, uh, this, this uh, order to the ordinance for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. On the motion. On the motion, uh, we'll take it up in committee. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Anyone from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Sillitson? Yes. Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. 
Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Free? Yes. Henny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Be it ordered that the DPW install a slow children's sign on the odd numbered side of Montcalm Street across the street from 418 Montcalm Street. Concert Costello. Thank you. Motion that the order be received and referred to the DTW for recommendation. Motion made in second that the order be received and sent to the DBW for implementation. For, for, for implementation. Right. Excuse me. What did you say? Well, just for a recommendation. We for don't recommendation know. on the motion. Uh, basically, a a um, a constituent had contacted me in regards to speeding. This particular location is near a school bus stop. Thank you. Any other? Yes, uh, Councilor Costello, is, do you mean implementation? Because those are two different things. Reco That's correct. I meant That's recommendation right. because it doesn't necessarily mean that the DPW is going to implement the order. They're going to make a recommendation of whether or not they can or not. So I just felt recommendation would make more sense. Many times I make a request like this and the recommendation is... Yeah, we'll go as your recommendation. It's your order. We'll go as your recommendation. That's right. fine. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Call, call please. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Sillitson. Yes. Skorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Free. Yes. Finia Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Be it ordered that the DPW install a sign autistic child in the area of 265 New Ludlow Road, Mason Manor Apartments. Councilor Mo Costello. Motion that the order be received and referred to DPW for either recommendation or installation. Motion made and seconded that the order be received and sent to the DPW for installation or recommendation on the motion. Uh, a constituent had contacted me in regards to an autistic child in the uh, particular area of this um, request. So I'm asking that DPW research for a sign. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zigorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yep. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Vinny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. <laughs> Order and the motion that, passes. Be it ordered that the DPW install a slow children's sign in front of 418 Montcalm Street. Councilor Costello. Motion that the order be received and referred to DPW for a recommendation or installation. Motion made and seconded that the committee, the report be received and sent to the DPW for installation or recommendation. On the motion. This is on the opposite side of the, four, this is um, on the area of the 418 Montcalm Street as the neighbor had requested. Uh, it's near a school bus stop, so it's, it's very similar to the order of 23. The only difference is that it's on the opposite side of the street to cover the speeding uh, signage for both ways. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yep. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Be it ordered that the City Council, under the provisions of Massachusetts general laws as amended and of any and every power and authority it thereunto enabling under its charter hereby accepts chapter 59 section 5 clause 56 of the Massachusetts general laws authorizing the city through its board of assessors to grant real and personal property tax abatements to members of the Massachusetts National Guard and to the reservists on active duty in foreign countries for the fiscal year they perform such ser services subject to eligibility criteria to be established by the Board of Assessors. Contra Tillotson. <coughs> Motion that the order be received and approved this evening. Motion made and second that the, the order be received and approved this evening on the motion. On the motion, <coughs> this is something that we have to do every two years. Uh, it's required by, this, by the state law. And it, it, it applies only to those uh, 
National Guardsmen or reservists who are activated uh, and sent overseas, and uh, they are in, they are, allows them to apply for a, an eligible exemption of of a of a thousand dollars if they meet the criteria. It, this is all administered by the assessors, but our position in this is if we don't renew it then anyone who gets activated and sent overseas for a year or two will not be able, will not be eligible so it's important that we approve it tonight i hopefully will never need to use this because hopefully we can stay peaceful but if we should get if we should be activating uh reservists from westover or national guards people uh, who own a home in Shikabi, uh they then would be eligible for applying for this uh thousand dollar waiver against their, to, to lower their taxes thank so you. i hope we can approve this this evening thank you jim any comments from the floor any comments from zoom roll call president laflam yes roy yes Tillotson. yes borowski yes mcauliffe yes brooks yes Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Cushain. Yes. Abri. Yes. Penny and Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Order that the Utilities Committee discuss issues with Crossroads Fiber. Councilor Dobos. Motion that the order is received and sent to the Utilities Committee for public hearing. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the Utilities Committee for a public hearing. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, uh, you know, I've always been a huge advocate of Crossroads Fiber. I think the whole council has, and I'll continue to be. I think it's a great service for a great price. I think it's fast internet, and I think it's better than the competition. Uh, however, there was an issue on Burnett Road where it went down on a Friday evening, uh, and they were not able to, uh, to even get it looked at until Monday. Um, because apparently Chickabee Electric Light does not service Crossroads Fiber on the weekends. Uh, and uh, I already uh, expressed to um, Chicken Electric Light Director Jim Lazowski, I believe that's unacceptable. I think there should be uh, service 24-7 or at least every day. Uh, internet is very important in it for people to have no internet for, you know, two or three days, I think is unacceptable. Uh, and uh, since we're, we're having a, a utilities meeting anyway um, next Thursday, November 10th, uh, to discuss the energy crisis and how that affects city residents. Uh, I'd like to add this on the agenda just so we can discuss it. I, I believe um, that we should expand the service to residents, uh, repair service to residents. So I just wanted to make that public. Um, you know, we had this issue in Burnett Road. It's probably going to come up in other wards. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Billiton? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yeah. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushain? Yes. Free? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. We have an application for a new home occupation license at 267 Chigabee Street, Apartment 8, for the purpose of doing psychotherapy virtually. Applicant Ashley Cox, 267 Chigabee Street, Apartment 8. Contra Valkyr. Motion to receive the uh, home occupancy application and refer to the zoning subcommittee, planning department, building department, and health department for a public hearing. Motion made in second that the applicant be received and sent to zoning. And do we want to repeat the others? Sure. So that uh, we have them on the record. Planning, um, building department, health department for a public hearing. Thank you. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, uh, we'll take this up in committee. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Anyone from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Silliton? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Vinny Costello? Yes. 13 yes. Motion passes. We have an application for a new special permit under Section 275-52B13 of the Municipal Zoning Ordinance for the purpose of having a fourth dog, a kennel license, located at 23 Don Street. Councilor Balakir. Well, a motion to receive the application for the new special permit application and refer to the Zoning Subcommittee, Planning Department, Building Department, Health Department for public hearing. Motion made and second that the application be received and referred to the Zoning Committee 
planning department, building department, and health department, health department mm -hmm. on For the motion. Carry. On the motion, we'll take this up in committee. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Balkir? Yes. Frampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushain? Yes. Bree? Yes. Benia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Okay. An application for a new Class II licensed business for Mar Auto Service at 31 Prospect Street. Councillor Brooks. Make motion the application be received and referred to the license committee for a public hearing. Motion made and seconded that the applicant be received, sent to the license committee for a public hearing on the motion. We'll take it up in committee. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushain? Yes. Three. Yes. Finia Costello. Yes. Thirteen. Yes. Motion passes. We have an application for a new auto repair license for Mar Auto Service at 31 Prospect Street. Councilor Brooks. Make a motion. Application be received and referred to the license committee for a public hearing. Motion made and seconded that the applicant be received and sent to the license committee for a public hearing on the motion. We'll take it up in committee. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the floor? Any comments on Zoom? Roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Three? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. And we have an application for a new auto detail license for Mar Auto Service located at 31 Prospect Street. Councilor Brooks? Motion that the application be received and referred to the license subcommittee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the applicant be received and sent to the license committee for a public hearing on the motion. We'll take it up with committee. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments on Zoom? Roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Bree? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a 2023 Class II license renewal. David Damaris, Pioneer Auto Sales, 168 New Lundlow Road. Councilor Brooks. Make a motion the application for the 2023 Class II renewal be received and passed this evening with current restrictions. Motion made and seconded that 2000, the 2022 Class II license for Davis Damaris be approved this evening with restrictions on the motion. On the motion, if there's no objections, we can vote it up or down this evening. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Gorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Cushane. Yes. Bree. Yes. Pena Costello. Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Okay. We're going to go around. Concert the boss. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, yeah, I was disappointed to hear that there was an accident involving a tractor trailer and a uh, car on, uh, at the Pride truck stop on Burnout Road. Um, uh, so I just want to thank my colleagues again for uh, voting down the second proposed truck stop because we would see a lot more of these accidents. Uh, I also want to thank, again, I want to thank Sam Shumsky, uh, the at-large counselors, uh, residents, Chicopee Police, DPW, uh, Sunshine Village, uh, for working on uh, safety issues uh, on the streets going to and from Litwin School. Um, these are some serious safety concerns there, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll work on uh, improving safety in that area. Uh, there's a utilities meeting, like I already mentioned, uh, Thursday, November 10th, 6.30, 4th floor of City Hall. Uh, we'll be discussing Crosswords Fiber and, uh, of course, the energy crisis with uh, Chicopee Electric Light Director Jim Lazowski. Uh, so I'm excited for that hearing. Uh, and uh, that's all, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McAuliffe. All set. Thank you, sir. Councillor Costello. Thank you, Councillor Laflamme. Um, I want to thank George Balakir for his tremendous effort in the zoning committee recently. There's a lot of new information out there. There's a lot of technology. You are very patient. Um, and because of your leadership, 
I think we all came around and had a vast better understanding of how the the new system works in regards to cell phone and the uh, equipment that's being installed on the the telephone poles. Thank you, as well as a, a shout out to the residents who also were there uh, to share in the um, in this uh, particular zoning committee meeting. I want to thank a constituent of mine, Lisa B. Avenue, for her hard work and her research in regards to contemporary issues in Chicopee. Uh, she's a hard worker. She's very knowledgeable. Uh, by trade, she's uh, a person that gets things done, and I appreciate her honesty and her ability to come to meetings, sometimes night after night, to refresh our memories and also to hold us accountable. And thank you, Mrs. Bieveno. I also want to thank uh, the election workers for their work on November 8th. That's not an easy job. Uh, these people come in and uh, they're hired through the uh, Register of Voters, who also does a good job. And um, we're very fortunate to have our election worker staff come in every election and uh, give us accurate information in regards to voting. I also want to thank the Chicopee DPW for all their hard work. Uh, they've been on the, uh, in Ward 9 many times during this past summer in regards to a lot of construction work. The most recent um, was a very <coughs> difficult um, project in regards to Voss Avenue and Blanchard Street. This has been an issue for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Many counselors have been involved in this. I was fortunate that I came around at the right time with the right DPW superintendent, civil engineer, and staff, and they were able to accomplish a job that was um, very well needed for many years, and I can't thank them enough. Thank you. Thank you. Just a little correction. The, the election workers work for the city clerk. Gets hired by the city clerk. Oh, I'm direction. sorry. Okay. That's okay. okay. I'm just, okay. just going to correct that. <laughs> thank you. Councilor Krampitz. Yeah, just a, uh, a reminder. It's uh, getting darker earlier now, so pay attention, and it's actually going to get... Uh, uh, darker even earlier after uh, daylight savings times end. So uh, please be careful when you're driving. Also a reminder uh, to vote on uh, Tuesday, November 8th and early voting ends uh, this Friday the 4th. Am I correct? Thank you. Friday the 4th. So if you still want to get in and, and vote down at City Hall, you can. Uh, and then also a reminder that um, Friday the 11th is Veterans Day. Uh, so please take the time to remember what Veterans Day is all about. It's not just a day off from school or special sales or whatever. Please remember uh, the women, men and women that uh, protect our country. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Roy. Yes, uh, just a little reminder from FEMA on disaster kits. Uh, they're saying that uh, your disaster supply kit should contain essential food, water, and supplies for at least three days. Keep this kit in a designated place and have it ready in case you have to leave your home quickly. Make sure all family members know where the kit is kept. Additionally, you may want to consider having supplies for sheltering in place for up to two weeks. And I just want to remind you, everybody, about uh, November 8th, uh, voting day. Uh, and November 9th is the Puerto Rican flag raising. I believe it's at 4 o'clock. If I'm wrong, uh, Del Marina will... Correct me, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> November 11th is Veterans Day, and uh, we have a wreath laying on Front Street at 11 a.m. Uh, memorial service at St. Rose Cemetery at 1.30 p.m. And don't forget, uh, Daylight Savings Saturday night. And this is your city. Take pride in it. Thank you. Thank you. Council Labrie. Yes, uh, we, thank you. Uh, we have a number of events scheduled for Veterans Day, and uh, I just want to make mention, as uh, Councillor Roy just indicated, that uh, there is a, a memorial uh, at the cemetery at St. Rose at 1.30 on Friday, November 11th. They've built a new memorial that, uh, there, and hopefully all the parts are going to be in, but it, it looks beautiful, and uh, it's going to be a great addition uh, to Ward 8. It's at the St. Rose de Lima Cemetery at 1.30 on Friday, November 11th. And I usually say, please vote on uh, September 8th, but I'm going to say, please vote by September 8th. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Concert Tillotson. 
<clears throat> Don't forget to, the Veterans Day. There's a mass or a memorial service at 10 o'clock at St. Stan's. Uh, they're saying, uh, get, uh, honoring the veterans uh, who served in World War II. The, the, the park at Doverbrook is there, and there will be a service there at 8.30 in the morning. So people can make that. If that's a, something that's well done, and hopefully people will get a chance to go there. Um, there's going to be that luncheon again at the Legion, and uh, there's quite a few activities planned for Veterans Day. So, again, uh, it, it's a day in which we can pay homage, honor to our to people who serve their country, and uh, those are just a few of the events, and some have already been mentioned already. Uh, again, daylight saving starts this weekend, <clears throat> so be careful when you're driving now. It's going to get dark at before 5 o'clock. Or right around that time, so be careful. Driving, speeding is one of our major problems. So now that it's going to get dark so early, we got to make sure we protect our children and our people. So drive carefully and um, stay safe. Thank, thank you, you. Contra Balak here. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Uh, again, I want to thank the healthcare workers for the great job they're doing during this COVID crisis. Uh, if you haven't gotten your flu shots, please get your flu shots. There's been a spike, and uh, the numbers are not looking good. There are also new vaccinations. And as we're going to be spending time indoors, please get your new COVID vaccinations if you haven't. Uh, another thing that's near and dear to me is the Ukraine crisis. This is an extremely dangerous situation with ramifications over here, especially with heating and also with gasoline and also with food. So if you can please pray for peace and if please possible donate to a local organization that references the Ukrainian situation. It's appreciated. Has been referenced about speeding. Uh, please slow down, especially in light of the fact that it's gonna be getting darker sooner. Uh, we do have speed tables on Front Street. I'd love to have them all over the city, but unless somebody wins Powerball and donates that money, it's not gonna happen, but we're trying. Please slow down. I want to also thank the spectacular committee for the great job they did. As been mentioned, Veterans Day is coming around the corner. Remember, freedom is not free. There's a lot of events going on. If you can't at least get to some of these events, at least honor a vet, because if not, we wouldn't have the freedom that we have in this country. And finally, please vote if you haven't voted on November 8th, because again, Elections have ramifications. Thank you. Councilor Zygorowski. Uh, there's been a lot of thank yous by this council lately. I want to thank them for everything they do. I want to thank all the people that came out for the public safety meeting up on Morrow Drive. Uh, I believe that it was very productive and hopefully some good will come of it. I'm sure that uh, our Councilman Dobaz and our school committee, Shumsky, will keep us uh, abreast of what's going on. Also, the Spookarama, I never served so many hot dogs in my life. It was over 1,200 hot dogs, but the, the callings that went there, there were over 5,000 people that showed up. That's a positive thing in our city. The next positive thing I want to say, because a lot of times there's negative things brought to our city and to our council. Uh, I just received a report from the police department on a monthly review between October 1st, as you all got it, and October 31st. There were 465 reports taken, 81 arrests, 146 crashes, call for service 5,325, 460 citations issued. Our police department is out there. They just made an arrest of three people that uh, did break in homes on Northern Drive. So those are the positive things. Yes, we can't do it all, but we're trying hard. And I, I like to bring out all the positive things more often. Yeah, there's going to be negative things, and we hear it. But there are a lot of good things in this city. Our mayor certainly has done a good job, and he continues to do that. And we as a council are trying our best. Uh, like I'll always close my, our meetings, that you see something, say something, no matter how small it may be. Don't be afraid to call in. That small little thing you might complain about might be a, something that could be arrestable or something that's going to help on your neighborhood. Thank you very much. Councilor Cushane. Thank you, Councilor Lopez. 
And following uh, Councilor Zagorowski's famous, if you see something, say something line, that doesn't just apply to uh, the police department and calling the police department. It also applies to things like what we saw today and what we saw at zoning. If you see something in your neighborhood that you're not happy about, reach out to the council and be involved. So again, I want to commend, I've done this in person to them multiple times. I've received calls from them. I've spoken to them. And I want to commend the residents who have shown up regarding the poll at 56 Foss Ave. Uh, c congratulations on your involvement. This is exactly what we want in the city. We want your involvement. Involvement, and I hope that you feel that your concerns were heard and understand that your concerns do matter. So thank you again. Um, in regards to uh, Councillor Roy's uh, talk about 4 p.m. versus 3 p.m., I'm not really sure. In Puerto Rico, we say an event starts at noon, and folks know to really arrive around 4 p.m. Oftentimes, we don't even put times <laughs> on invitations. So this is in true Puerto Rican fashion here. Uh, I believe it's 4 p.m. The yellow calendar that we received says 4 p.m. Uh, the press release said 3 p.m., but that may have been an error. So I'm sure the mayor's office will post uh, the correct time on their Facebook, and will keep us abreast, and we'll get an email about it. But who knows? It's in Puerto Rican fashion, so we're hoping to actually get that flag raised at a specific time, but uh, you know, this is this is very, very true to our nature here. I also want to remind folks of the Chicopee Job Fair happening tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, November 2nd from 3 to 6 p.m. That's at the River Mill Center. For those who may not know where that's located, that's at 5 West Main Street, Chicopee, Mass. Um, and I'm really happy to see that happen, uh, given that this there are a lot of job openings in the city of Chicopee. It's a great place to work. I think all of us would agree that this is a great place to serve. And so if there is any interest interest for anyone to work for our city. That is the place you want to be. All the job offerings are going to be available there. Uh, I know that the, the mayor's office and the human resources department has been working very hard to put this together and I commend them for their efforts because in this market it is very difficult uh, to find the right talent and they're doing everything possible to find that. So uh, thank you and I hope to see you all tomorrow at the job fair. Thank you. Councilor Brooks. Yeah, thank you, Council President. You know, we debate this issue about group homes and certainly I don't think it belonged in public safety because I don't think any individual with a developmental or otherwise cognitive disability poses a threat to the general community in the city of Chicopee. Uh, I do appreciate Councilor Zigorowski and I'd like to thank him for hosting that meeting that evening. I, I hope people learned a little bit about the issue and that if we are going to bring this issue before the council again, it, it, it doesn't go to public safety. I think public safety poses, you know, when something's placed in public safety, there's a negative connotation. And certainly I, I would hope that my colleagues don't believe that residents with disabilities, regardless of what neighborhood they reside in, whether a wealthy neighborhood or a, a typical neighborhood pose a, a threat. Uh, to the neighbors or residents of that specific community. I think Councilor Lopez mentioned at that meeting that she has a community-based group home in her neighborhood and she enjoys the interaction that she experiences with them. So again, thank you, Councilor Lopez, for the work that you do on behalf of the disabled with the Center for Human Development on their Human Rights Committee. It's certainly greatly appreciated. I had worked there for a period of about five years as their vice president. So knowing the kind of work that they do, there's no doubt in my mind that um, you're doing good work on that on that Human Rights Committee. And then on a lighter note, to Councilor Zigorowski's point about passing out hot dogs, Bob, I'm not sure that you didn't eat more hot dogs than you passed out, <laughs> just for the record. Um, because as, as I stood next to you, I'm, I think that we both had a little bit more candy and a few more hot dogs than we might have otherwise passed out. So, so that's why we uh, ran out. <laughs> the spooktacular was a, a phenomenal event, and it just it just really reinforces the fact that Chickabee does great things and great community events for its residents. And <clears throat> to see the little ones in their costumes and how much fun they were having going to every vendor and, and going on the buses and coming and waiting for their hot, their hot dogs and other things that we gave out. It was just an amazing event. And, you know, 2000 people, in my opinion, was an underestimate of the, the quantity of people who actually took part in the event and how much fun everybody had. Thank you. If I may, I'm gonna just speak about the spectacular for a moment. 
I want to thank the mayor's office and his team and all city workers that were involved in this project. But I also want to uh, thank the, the Chickpea Freshen team. Uh, again, they're the one who cooked all the hot dogs, their team, uh, in that uh, new vehicle that they have. They did all the cooking. We, as a city council, uh, just served them, um, and we did a great job. And I want to thank the councilors who attended that with me, uh, Councilor Labrie, Councilor uh, Lopez, uh, Councilor Costello, Councilor Brooks, uh, Councilor Cushane and Councilor Ziggler, I'll say thank you for your help. I know other people were going to help, but the day got changed, so the other councilors were not able to make it. They were going to make it the first time, but were unable to make it the second time. So again, it was a great event, uh, as it was mentioned, and I think that shows that we as a council uh, want to support anything that the mayor or anybody brings for the community to help the community. And I also want to take a moment, uh, a comment was made about uh, Councilor Ballard uh, Kier's committee. I want to thank you, George. It's a tough committee. Ordinance and zoning are one of the toughest committees that we have because it affects the neighborhoods and affects the the uh, more uh, their neighbors. And so the ordinance committee and zoning committee are very important to that. So I thank you. It's a it's a tough job. And I when I gave you the position, I thought you could handle it. You're doing a great job. So thank you. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion, Motion made and second to adjourn. Roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy yes. Tillotson. Yes. Borowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Falkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Hussein. Yes. Bree. Yes. yes. Penny and Costello. Yes. 13 yes. We get to go home and the motion passes. <laughs> 830.